Shall we proceed to the next question from the brothers? Yes. Um, yeah. My name is Rahul. I am a telecoms engineer working in Dubai since 2002. I want to ask a few questions. Coming from my background, I think religion is something that following that, you're safe from making, um, having problems in your life. Yeah. Um, my first question is, I recently read a report by a doctor saying that because of marriages in first cousins in Islam, it leads to a higher probability of the fetuses being born uh, as handicaps. Yeah? It increases the probability of the babies born without hands or without legs. So if it was something that could potentially cause harm, it should not have been allowed in Islam. Another point to, I would like to add to the same question is, recently I suffered a little bit of a BP. And I went to the doctor, and the first thing he said to me is that stop eating red meat, which is again allowed in Islam. So I would uh, think that if these things could be harmful to the human body, these should not have been allowed by who has created us. So if you can clarify me on that. The brothers asked two questions. The first question that is talking about consanguineous marriages. Consanguineous marriages means marriage between close relatives. In English, it's called as consanguineous marriages. And in consanguineous marriages, medical science tells us today, there are high chances of genetic problems. And I do agree with the brother. Mm -hmm. So why does Islam permit that? Yes. It's clearly mentioned in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 22 to 24, the woman who you can marry and the woman who cannot marry is mentioned there. Amongst them, it's clearly mentioned you cannot marry your sister and a lady cannot marry the brother. It's mentioned. Neither the father, neither the mother, you cannot marry the brother of your father, the ladies, and you cannot marry the sister of your father. That means the important close relatives are mentioned in the Quran. Brother, sister cannot marry, son and mother, father and daughter, paternal uncle, maternal uncle can't marry. But as far as first cousins are concerned, Islam does give permission. Now, as far as consanguineous marriages are concerned, the maximum problem comes when you marry your direct blood brother and sister. Consanguineous marriage. Even if you marry your direct father, daughter, mother and son, or your uncle, the chances are also there if you marry your first cousin, but it's negligible, very negligible. So no, it's that's not, not... That's not what the report said. The report said that because of marriages in first cousins, not your brothers and sisters, it let leads me, to this problem. Let and me it from a let, let it me was complete. published in Gulf News as well, actually. Brother, let me complete when I am a doctor. Ah, okay. Fine. Even I am a medical doctor. Yeah. It's me, medical doctor, with that doctor. Yeah. The chances in direct relatives are very high. Yeah. If a sister and brother marry, the chances are very high. Yeah. If a father and daughter are very high, you have read only one report, you haven't read the other report. Uh, yeah. So you only read Gulf News, I read medical books. So yeah. Gulf News is better or medical books is better? Right, so your point is, your point is, marrying in first cousins, uh, the lesser, chances of getting problem is negligible. As compared to brother and sister. As compared to, as, as compared, com compared to, yeah. compared. But still, but still there is a... Brother, will you let me complete my answer or...? Sorry, yeah, please. So you have more faith in Gulf News? No, no, not really. I'm here huh? to find the, the truth. Sure, that's right. <laughs> so what do you realize? That consanguineous marriage, and I agree with you. I didn't say it's not there. Yeah. So I'm not trying to beat around the bush. But compared, it is negligible, compared to direct blood brother and sister. Now, I do agree that there are medical genetic problems in various ways. But this report is there when you have continuously generation after generation. And our beloved prophet, the Rakhon Dr. Ahmed Sakhari says, the prophet said, do not marry against first cousins generation after generation. And if you do it once or problem. twice, it is no problem. Yet, even if you marry not cousins also, you can get a problem. Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. That. Ah, so that doesn't mean that you stop marriage only. Right, so there is a ah. hadith which says yes. that do not do it generation after generation. Yes, but otherwise generally there's no problem. Right. Fine? Okay. Okay. So coming to your second question. Yeah. You went to a doctor and you said you had high BP. Yes. Doctor said you have red meat. Yes. So why does Islam allow red meat? Yes. You know my friend went to a doctor and doctor said you have diabetes. Don't have sugar. Brother, why do you have sugar? Right. Why? Don't have sugar. My friend went to a doctor, doctor said, they had diabetes, don't have sugar. Brother, do you have sugar? Yes, of course. Why you have sugar? Stop having sugar. Yeah, well, we can live on vegetables, easily possible. Can we you can live, live without chicken. having sugar? Can you live without having sugar? Even vegetarians have sugar, brother. 
Yeah. Are you educated? Yeah. yeah. MashaAllah. <laughs> the problem is that person had a problem with his pancreas. Yeah. In the pancreas, there are islets of linger hand which break down the sugar. Because my friend had a problem in the pancreas, he could not break down the sugar. Therefore, the doctor said, don't have sugar. Right. If you have some problem of red meat, you should not have red meat. Others can have red meat. Right. <laughs> the Quran says, a gender statement Quran says, eat what is halal and tayyab for you. There's a verse in the Quran, eat what is halal and tayyab for you. For a person suffering from diabetes, sugar is not tayyab. So according to the Quran, a person having diabetes should have less sugar. It's a gender statement. Eat what is halal and tayyab for you. That means certain things which is good for others may not be good for you. But there are certain things which are bad for everyone. Alcohol. Alcohol is bad for everyone. It is prohibited for everyone. Pork is bad for everyone. Therefore, pork has been prohibited for everyone. What do you realize? Certain food, because of the way your metabolism is made, because it's a problem for you, doesn't mean that everyone should abstain from it. Hope that answers the question. Brother. Sure. Okay. My uh, next question is... Um, Islam allows marriages, um, I mean, a husband to marry more than one wife, four wives. Is it um, compulsory to take the permission from the wife before marrying that second one? Because a lot of Muslim girls have told me that, you know, they have to take permission from the first wife, so our interests are taken care of. I hope you don't intend to become Muslim and marry more than one wife, huh? No, I don't. Because, <laughs> because there's a new law in the Indian government. If a Hindu converts to Muslim and marries more than one wife, then there's a problem. Yeah, yeah. There's a no, new law that's passed. I don't intend to, but I just need to find don't out. Don't intend to marry or don't intend to convert? I, well, I won't answer that now. <laughs> <laughs> the other the question that is it compulsory that the husband should take the permission of his first wife before he marries the second wife? As a general rule, because it is mentioned in the Quran that a man can have more than one wife, it is not required for a man to take the permission of first wife, but it is preferably takes permission or at least informs her. Okay. Yeah. As far as permission, certain conditions become compulsory. During a nikah, during a marital contract, a man or a woman, before they get married, they can put any conditions which are permitted. If the woman puts a condition in the nikah nama that my husband will not take a second wife as long as I live, because marrying more than one wife is optional. So if she puts a condition, then it becomes compulsory for the husband to take the permission of the wife, otherwise he cannot marry. If this is not mentioned in the nikah nama, if it's not mentioned in the marital contract, it's not a must, it is preferable. Okay, Hope that answers okay. the question. Thanks. My last question, this la my last question is... Yeah, brother, you are most welcome. Just stand behind the queue. Okay, there may be you. one or two non-Muslims. You. you can wait, brother. There may be one or two non-Muslims. Just stand behind the non-Muslims and we'll try and give all the non-Muslims the chance. Alhamdulillah, I got a chance to be accept Islam. But my question is, my father never got the chance and shirk is the biggest sin and I want to know if there is a specific dua or something I can read on his name so that his sin will be forgiven. 